What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Big Stacks Przingis, aka P with a plug, Mr. Know It All, the number one Knicks fan in the world, and we back today with some more MLB the show. And today we starting the franchise. That's what everybody been waiting for, it's what I've been waiting for. I think this is gonna be the most fun. You know, the road to the show is fun as well. But you know, it takes a little while for you to get to the major leagues. And once you get to the major leagues, it kind of gets a little it can be boring sometimes, but the franchise mode is always going to be exciting. It's always an opportunity to make, you know, adjustments or spice things up and make it exciting. Um, but for all y'all that don't, that know, and for you that don't know, uh, we had four teams and we did a voting in the last video, my introduction to the franchise mode. And the four teams were the Braves, the White Sox, Tampa Bay Rays, and the Miami Marlins. And... I gotta say, this is why I love all of y'all as fans, and I think y'all the best fans in the world because y'all gave me exactly what I wanted. Um, what I was afraid that was gonna happen was that everybody was gonna say White Sox, White Sox, White Sox, White Sox, because everybody knows that's my favorite team. But of course, that's not what y'all did. Y'all gave me exactly what I wanted, was, which was a fair and even amount of voting. And when it first started, everybody was saying White Sox. White Sox took the early lead. Um, and then the Miami Marlins started creeping up. Um, and then in the middle, the middle stages of voting, the Tampa Bay Rays caught up, and I, the Miami, I mean the Tampa Bay Rays got like a crazy amount of votes uh, in the middle of voting. And then um, when I went to bed and woke up at like four o'clock, no, when I went to bed, I woke up and then I seen some messages on, from my YouTube at four o'clock in the morning about the Atlanta Braves, so they got some late night uh, voting, and I had to go through the comments over a hundred times probably because you guys kept commenting when I thought I'm, sometimes I go to the, the video and I'd be like okay this is probably it nobody probably nobody else is gonna, probably gonna leave a vote um, it'd be like 30 something comments then I go back and it'd be 35 and I'm like okay I'm, I'm almost sure that those are the last people that are gonna vote then I go back again it's 38 then I go back again it's 40 then I go back again it's 41 and then what I decided to do to try to make it even more even was to go to Twitter but unfortunately Twitter wasn't the best place to go because a lot of the fans and a lot of the people I know on Twitter didn't watch the first introduction video of me breaking all of the teams down um, roster by roster so a lot of them just picked the White Sox because they know I'm a White Sox fan so I just I discontinued the uh, <laughs> the Twitter server because the White Sox had like 50% of the vote and all the other teams had like 19 and 18% um, but the winner and the team that we're going to start this franchise with, the team that has chosen me to be their GM, the team that I'm going to accept a contract offer for, and that I'm going to turn the entire franchise around, is going to be... Can I get a drum roll, please? The Miami Marlins. Let's get it started, man. Um, I'm so happy it's the, um, it's the Miami Marlins because like I said when I introduced the franchise mode it's let me figure this out real quick make sure it's nothing crazy on here force trades no designated hitter auto ignore budgets off computer trading of course computer roster control no no legends fantasy draft no but anyway like I was saying when I was seeing the voting system and I was seeing a lot of you guys vote um, I was I was proud to see that some of the comments were taking consideration of what I said in my introduction video, which made me proud because it was happy to know that I, me putting out that introduction video before starting the franchise meant, it was, I did that for a reason. I, I was hoping that people would take all of the things that I said in that video into consideration. A lot of you did, and a lot of you voted for the Marlins because y'all said they're the actual rebuilding team. They actually don't have a lot of pieces. The White Sox. The Braves, even the Rays in some sorts, um, have like some type of foundation. And with those teams, I would just be waiting for those players to develop and hopefully reach their development and full potential. But with the Marlins, I have to actually go out and build this team. And you will be able to see me in this team because there's nothing There's nothing here in the Marlins. There, there, there's really nothing. They have, you know, we're about to look over the roster and set the team up and set up a, our lineups. Um, our pitching rotation, different things like that. So you'll see we don't really have much to work with. But like with the White Sox, you have Johan Moncada. The the Braves have Freddie Freeman and, and uh, Ronald Acuna, the number one prospect in the league. Um, the Rays didn't really have much. 
but I feel like Miami is is, is fresh. They they had they just signed they, Derek Jeter. I mean, he just bought the team. They just traded away all of their their best players, and now I can really build this team how I would want to build a franchise. So. <clears throat> Off, off top, we're going to check out the roster again. I know we, we did it in the first video, but I just want to go over it again. And as y'all can hear, the PlayStation has gotten better. I cleaned some of it. I just have to take the red, the bottom apart and actually get in there and really clean that. But thank goodness, it, it sounds like it's about to start heating back up, but it has been a little bit better. Um, but quickly, just an overhaul view of our roster real quick. Um, we're going to call Trevor Rogers up at some point um, and, and get him going. Brad Ziegler is the guy we're going to trade. He's very old, and I think he has one one year on his contract. I did a lot of research. When I found out this was the team that I was going to play with, I did a lot of real-life research on his team, and I was taking notes and, and different things. It's somewhere in this room. <clears throat> but I'm going to make this the, the best franchise that I can for y'all. So I know exactly what I want to do, what players I already want to trade, and, and contracts I want to get rid of, and things like that. We're going to rebuild this, this Miami Marlins team real beautifully. Um, Cause y'all know I, I love Miami, and so um, I'm putting on for the city, 305 baby. Anyway, JT Ramoto, um, in real life, Ramuto, Ramoto, whatever you want to call him, in real life he's hurt. But on the game they put him in the minor leagues because he's hurt. But I'm gonna call him up right away. We're just gonna call him up and move him to the MLB. And of course he's not on the 40-man roster. I don't know why, cause in real life he would be on the 40-man roster. But we're gonna call him up to the MLB. Um because they don't have him injured, he's just in the minors. So, now I have to send somebody down and it's gonna be, who do I wanna send down? Um, Brian Holiday. Let's move Brian Holiday to double A. Wait, single A. We're gonna move him to single. <sighs> okay, so now we got our catcher. Justin Boy is going to be our, uh, our uh, first baseman. Garrett Cooper is going to be off the bench, and he's going to play sometimes in the outfield. He can play uh, left, right, plus first base. Um, Silent Castro is going to be our second baseman. Uh, Martin Prado, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with him. He is a guy that has, he's going to be making like $12 million this year, $13.5 million this year. Um, he has like a three-year, $40 million, three-year, $60 million contract, I believe. Um... But he's such a good hitter, I just don't know. Because if you look right here, contact left, he has a 99. That's that's ridiculous. And he has an 89 vision at the plate, so he can really hit. He's a good um, veteran, and he, he might be a veteran that we can use to mentor some of our young guys with their hitting and development. Uh, but Brian Anderson is going to be our starting third baseman. He's going to be our th starting third baseman. Right now, he's my prized possession. He's a guy that I'm going to try. I'm not going to build a team around, but I'm going to give him a lot of opportunity to succeed. Um, he's going, this is his rookie year, um, and we're going to allow him to just have every chance to flourish and develop and get to his fullest potential. You see the potential is an A, um, and we want we want that potential to stay at an A, and we want him to develop quickly, and we want him to become the face of this franchise, um, you know, pretty, pretty soon. So it's going to be a lot of responsibility. It's going to be a big year for Brian Anderson, and we're not trying to put too much pressure on him, but we're expecting a lot from him. At shortstop, Miguel Rojas is not going to be our guy. We're going to actually go with JT Riddle. As y'all see, he's a 26-year-old with the B potential, which y'all probably know from the first time we went over the, the roster. So I'm going to actually promote him right now. He's from Double A, so we're going to report him. We're going to add him to the 40-man roster. And then we're going to call him up to the MLB, and he's going to take Miguel's spot because in real life, I believe JT Riddle starts. Um, he doesn't. He didn't start the first few games for them for whatever reason. He may have had a knickknack injury or whatever. Um, but he is going to be their starting um, shortstop sometime soon this season. Um, in left field, Derek Dietrich. We're going to keep him there. I like Derek Dietrich. Um, he's very solid. I think he can develop into you know like a 76. Um, he might be like a good number two hitter for us, something like that. Uh, very consistent. Very good defensively out there. And I'm actually expecting him to be, you know, somebody that's going to be consistent for us. He's going to be a bright spot for us this year. Uh, Rafael Ortega, he might be called up sometime soon. Um, and we got to get rid of some of these guys right here. This 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 chunk right here of 30-year-old outfielders who haven't made it to the, the majors, I want to get rid of these guys. I do not want them in my, my farm system taking away playing time from these young 24 and 22 year olds who could use playing time to develop 
um, into some type of baseball player for us. I want all of our youth to get an opportunity to develop, uh, whether it's in a minor league system or at the majors, they all need to be playing baseball um, at a significant rate for us this season. We're a very young team. We have no chance of competing for anything this year. So it's all about giving these young guys as much opportunity as they can. So if J.B. Shuck, Eric Campbell, and Scott Van Slyke, they cannot be playing over, you know, Rafael Ortega and uh, Stone Garrett and Austin Dean. It just can't happen. So we got to clear those guys off the roster. We won't get much in return, but if we could just get some type of youth, they might not have the most potential, but it, it, youth. Right now, our focus is youth, 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 youth. Over in center field, Lewis Brinson, the guy that we got back from the Christian Yelich trade, he is going to be our leadoff hitter, most likely. Um, and he has a potential as well, so I want him to develop um, like Brian Anderson. I want one of those guys to take off and become the face of this franchise and be you know, a, a bright spot for our team that's going to not be that good this year. As long as they develop and have good rookie years, our record won't matter. I just want the young talent to develop um, as best as I can or as best as they can, and that's going to be the, the main focus. Y'all going to hear me say that a lot. Same thing with Monte Harrison. He can play two other outfield positions. So Lewis Brinson has his center field position locked up, but Monte Harrison could see some time in left field, right field. Um, he actually has a little bit of speed himself. It looks like he has a little bit of power in his bat. So he's going to be a guy that we're going to actually, you know, make sure he's getting a lot of proper playing time. Right now he's in double A. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move him to triple A. And I'm going to give this 28-year-old Isaac Galloway, he's going to move down to double A. So let's move him to double A. And then let's move Monte to triple A. Um, and yeah. Then we have Magnerius Sierra. I mean, uh, Sierra. He can play also left or right field. He has a B potential like Monte. He's a year younger. Um, and this right here could be our core outfielding group. We can have Lewis Brinson um, in center, Monte in left, Sierra in right, and, 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 and we could possibly have something special right here. This could, could maybe be the replacement of um, Yelich, Ozuna, and John Carlos Stanton. Um, so I'm, I'm looking very, very forward to seeing these guys develop throughout this opening year. Um, cause Derek Dietrich is 28. Um, he's going to be a guy that can, can mentor, you know, Monte Harris if we move him to left field or Sierra to not put too much pressure on them to come out the gate, uh, being spectacular. You know what I mean? We can ease them in. Cameron Mayfield in right field. He's a guy, Cameron Maven, I'm sorry, is a guy we're going to get rid of. He's, he's not going to finish this year with us. Um, some point in this season, we're going to trade him. I know that for a fact he's on a one year deal. Um, we can actually look at his contract right now. He's making 3.4 million this year and then he's going to enter free agency. So we're going to get rid of him. We're going to try to give him away to a team that's competing for a playoff spot or a wild card spot. And hopefully he can provide them some type of spark. He's a 76. He's not bad at all. He actually still has some speed, you know, a 74. Um, contact hitter. And he can play a little bit of outfield. He's versatile in the outfield. can play all three spots. So some team is going to use him and hopefully we can trade him in for some you know some youth you know youth 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 and then when we start looking at our pitching um chin chin is making a lot of money when i looked up him his contract um 3.6 million 3.6 million in real life he's making a lot more there he's making double digits um in real life he's going to be making like 8 15 this year 18 no 15 this year 20 the next year and then 22 million would be his third year in real life but right now i guess mlb the show didn't translate the real contracts for whatever reason but he's going to get traded okay he's um matter of fact i take that back i don't know if we're going to trade him now because in real life he's making 22 and 20 million the last two years of his contract which was a big 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 knock in the payroll but now that I'm saying he's making 3.6 on a video game, I have no really no real reason to trade him un un unless you know we can get something big back for him because he's 32 years old. Um, he's a 79. He's very solid. You know, some team. You know, the Dodgers are always looking to stack up on pitching. The Cubs are always looking for more pitching. Um, he's a lefty. You know, teams are always looking for left-hand pitchers to throw in that rotation to make some type of World Series push. So we'll see. We'll see about Chen. Um, but yeah, Brad Ziegler and Cameron Maben are two names that are going to definitely get traded. They will not 
be a part of this Miami Marlins team for that much longer. And then we will see what's going to happen with Martin Prado. You know, I like him. I think we should keep him um, and, and use him for, in some development for Brian Anderson and a couple other guys like Lewis Brinson, Monte Harrison, and Magnerius Sierra because Martin Prado is also a guy that can play the outfield. And if you look at his left hand and right hand batting boxes, you see he's a fabulous hitter. He's a fabulous hitter. And he's 34 years old, still has a B potential. So he's definitely a guy that we might keep. Let's look at his contract. 3.6 million. I can deal with that for a guy that can, can produce as much as he can. Um, but let's go to these lineups and pitching rotation to figure out exactly how we're going to do this. Like I said, JT Riddle is going to be our starting shortstop. So we're going to put uh, Miguel on the bench. Brian Anderson will definitely be our starting third baseman. And Martin Prado, I want to get him out there somehow, some way. So let's see, Cameron Maven is playing right field. Um, do I want to put, well right now we're looking at lineups with the DH. For any of you that aren't too familiar with baseball, um, the Marlins are a National League team, so we're not going to have a lot of opportunity to play with the DH lineup. But I'm still going to face it because we are going to play the Yankees in this month, um, month of games. So I'm probably going to put Prado at the DH position uh, for when we play with, with a DH against an American League team. Um, and real quickly, I'm going to go over the, 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 the way I'm going to do this franchise. And if y'all don't like the, the way I'm, I'm, I'm telling y'all I'm going to do the, the franchise, y'all just let me know and voice y'all's opinion. If y'all want this to be a sim-only franchise, we can do a sim-only. But I know a couple of you guys are going to want to see some gameplay every once in a while, and that's fine. So what I did was I broke the season down. For y'all that don't know, it's 162 games in every MLB season. And those 162 games are spread across six months. So when you divide that, that's like 27 games a month. Um, and basically what I'm going to do, and the, the formula I found myself to basically pace the franchise in a good amount of episodes and keeping it you know, entertaining and, and, and also balanced is Smartest thing for me is to simulate, in my opinion, opinion, the smartest thing for me to do is to simulate um, a month an episode and then play one game uh, a month. So we'll be simulating an entire season in six episodes and we'll be playing six games. It's that simple. And every game, I'll, I'll pick another pitcher from the rotation. So it's five pitchers in a pitching rotation. So for the first game, we use our ace, which is the first pitcher in your rotation. The second game, I'll drop down and use the second guy in a rotation. Third game, third guy, fourth game, for, you get the pitcher. Then in that sixth and final game, what I'll do is, instead of going and playing with another pitcher twice, I'll play a, a minor league game so we can check on our prospects and play with them and see how they're progressing and how they play. Um, and, and we'll do it like that. But if you guys don't like that idea, if you guys don't want to see any gameplay footage of MLB, um, then y'all voice that in this video and then want, and we just do a simulation. But the best thing to do uh, in simulating baseball is to do it slowly because there's a lot of things you have to pay attention to. You have to check on your prospects. Um, guys are going to be called up. Guys are going to be getting called down. Guys are going to be getting injured. You have to scout for the MLB draft. It's not like basketball when you just simulate and guys are getting hurt. It's more to it than guys getting hurt. You're going to be doing trades. Trades are going to be going around all all year long um, for the first couple of months, of course, until the trade deadline. Um, you got guys getting on a trading block. Like I said, you want to continue to scout because when the draft comes, you're going to have a lot of opportunity to pick um, up-and-coming guys. So you want to make sure you execute on who you want to draft and things like that. So it's very, very important that we get a good pace so that we don't over simulate and miss an opportunity to draft a budding star or make the right trade or keep up with our prospects in the minor leagues who are doing good or doing bad like we might we might call up like JT Riddle for example we called up JT Riddle from the start simulating this first month I'll be able to see how he's doing in the first month if JT Riddle has a bad start to the month he's not he's not really progressing he's doing awful it's hurting him we might send him back down to the minors but if I do a two-month simulation and I'm not keeping up with the players, it might be too late. You know, he, it might damage him or damage his rating and hurt his progression. So it's very, very important that we take this simulation slow and at a good pace and not over-simulate because baseball, it's a lot of details. But anyway, the batting order. The most important thing 
for our offense to bat in order. Lewis, Lewis Brinson is going to be our, our lead off hitter. He's going to be our lead off hitter. Um, he has, he's probably the fastest guy on our team with a 75. No, actually, JT is, okay? But JT is going to be our second hitter because I like his next um, of vision and contact. And he also has a little bit of speed. So I'm going to put those two right there. Brian Anderson has a little bit of power. Um, so we're going to put him third. Then Justin Bohr. You know what? No, we're going to put Charlon Castro third because he has enough contact. Oh, wait. Who do I want to put third? Huh. Justin Bohr is going to be our cleanup hitter for sure. You know what? Martin Prado is going to be there. Brian Anderson is going to be our six hitter. He's going to be our six hitter. That's a good spot for him. Um, Derek Dietrich is going to be seventh. Cameron Maybin is going to be eighth. And JT Ritter is going to be ninth. I like this lineup right here. I like this lineup. Uh, we got two We got two, two of our fastest guys at the top of the order. Lewis Brinson is not... Uh, he's not a spectacular guy at stealing. If you look at the stealing overall, it's 58. But that's good enough to steal some bases and make teams pay attention to him on the base paths. Uh, and JT is not... Good is still in at all. He has a 24, but he has enough speed to be effective on a base pass. But JT has contact. He can hit the ball very, very well, and he has a, a good enough vision at the plate. So I think number two is perfect for him. And then after him, we have Starlin Castro, which is basically the same thing as JT. They're both good contact hitters. Uh, power is decent. JT actually has a little bit more power. No, JT doesn't have a little bit more power. Yes, he does. JT's power is more balanced, I will say. Castro has more power against right-handed pitchers, which is who we're facing. You know, it says versus right-hand pitchers. So we're gonna we're gonna keep it just like this. Justin Bohr, his power is an 83 against right-hand pitcher. We gotta keep him there. And Prado is Prado. You know, uh, 99 contact, 70 contact, 89 vision. So he's gonna draw some walks. Um, has a good arm and out there in the outfield that I didn't say anything about earlier. Um, and Brian Anderson, I think this six spot is perfect for him. It's not too much pressure. He doesn't have to do anything out of the ordinary. Um, he has some power. That's going to put some power at the back of our lineup because we want to have a, a, a very balanced lineup. You don't want to put everybody or your best hitters all at the front. We want the back end to have some guys that can contribute and get on base. And I think we do that with Brian and Derek at our six and seven spot. Um, Cameron Maybin, he's like I said, he's not a guy that we're... we're we're going to hold on to for much longer, but I think eighth is going to be okay for him. If he does get on base at the eighth spot, you know, that'll be perfect because by the time he gets up to Lewis and uh, JT, they'll be able to drive him in because he's going to be able to steal some bases with his speed. And then JT, JT is good at number nine. You know, JT is going to come in and uh, really be a fielder off top. He has some contact, um, which is important, but his vision is a little bit low. But as you can see, his, his reaction, his arm and his fielding are all good and almost to 70s which is perfect for him um, and the 66 speed is not bad at all so I think that's exactly the lineup that we want now when we go against no DH this is going to be the lineup that we're going to see a lot and use a lot because we're a National League team so we're not going to have a lot of opportunities to play with a DH so this is our main lineup um, and like I said Lewis Brinson is going to start and yes I made the decision Martin Prado is going to play right field for us Karen Mayben is going to start on the bench I might I might trade Cameron Mayben immediately. He might be our first trade of the season, y'all. So if y'all came to see transactions, we're gonna see some in the first episode. Hopefully, depending on what the offers is. It might might it might not be too smart to trade him right away. Um, but we're just gonna see what we can get. You know what I mean? Maybe somebody's desperate, maybe somebody just had a, a, a opening day injury or a spring training injury. And uh hopefully we can finesse somebody. <clears throat> so we're gonna do it do the same thing. Uh, JT is going to be our second guy, Castro, and uh, Boar. Then we're going to go with Martin, and there, there you go. This is against right-hand pitchers again. So we did the same exact thing because nothing changed except the DH. It's still right-hand pitching, so all of the attributes that I looked at applies. Now when we get to left-handed pitchers, we're going to have to pay attention to who can hit against lefties and who can't hit against lefties, and we might have to make some type of adjustments. Third base, Prado is going to come out. Then we're going to actually take out Maybin and we're going to let Gary Cooper, our rookie, uh, get some get some reps and some at-bats. Um, again, Lewis Brinson is going to be our leadoff hitter. 
Uh, regardless, Lewis Lewis Henson, his Lewis Benson Brinson hitting is pretty balanced. So regardless who he's facing, a right hand left hand pitcher, he's going to be our leadoff hitter. Now for the second guy batting, we're going to look at Dietrich um, against left handed pitching. His contact is a 60. JT contact is a 70. Uh, Brian, in, okay, so we're going to keep it with JT. JT is going to keep batting second. We're going to take him out and put another JT. And we have two JTs. I just noticed that. I don't know how I missed that. Um, Castro, his batting against lefties is 77. I like that. And his power is 41. That's good enough. Um, Justin Bohr, his power drops against left-hand pitchers. So I might not put him there. But it's still the best on the team. So we are going to keep him there. I'm sorry. And then Prado is a 99. So we're going to put Prado at number three. And we're going to put Castro at five. Ryan at six. Dietrich at seven. And then we have some power with Gary Cooper at eight. So I like that a lot. So then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to put Brian Anderson is our third baseman. JT Riddle is going to be our shortstop. Martin Pato is going to be our right fielder. Lewis Brinson there. JT is second. Poor is four. Pato is third. Um, Castro is fifth. Sixth. And we just like that. Perfect. So that's our lineup. I, I like our lineup. I, I, I see some potential in here. Um. This lineup where Cameron may have been played, we're going to take him out. We're going to take him out. We're going to let Gary Cooper get all of those reps. And we're going to say goodbye to Cameron Mayben. He's not going to start for us because we know we want to trade him. I wanted to tell you that JT Ramoto has been, Ramuto has been called up to the Marlins. Thank you. Thank you. I know because I did it myself. Uh, we have 26 guys on our MLB. 25 roster so who on this MLB roster do I want to drop um, let's see we have to send somebody to the minors to make it balanced we have to send somebody to double A so I'm trying to look on the MLB roster who do I want to send to the to double A um, Rivera will go to double A now it's back balance everything is cool now pitching rotation this is gonna this is very very important for us uh, this is going to be a lot simpler, simpler than the uh, starting lineup because, I mean, you see, it basically works itself out. Our best pitcher is going to be our ace, which is Chen. He's going to be our ace. Um, Dan, Dan Straley is going to be second. You know, left hand, right hand, left hand, right, right. Perfect. I like that. But actually, I want to go Jose. I want Jose to go second. He's young. He's a young building piece for us, so we're gonna we're gonna let him go second. You know, what, what do we have to lose? You know, if he if he starts out bad, then forget it. <sighs> Cal, I can't pronounce his last name. Bacarlo, um, Bacarlo, whatever. He's gonna be our closer because Brian Brad Ziegler, we're about to ship out sometime soon, so we don't even want him to feel comfortable being our closer. We want our closer to feel like the closer from day one. Why not? And um, perfect. It looks perfect to me. We got a uh, so player salaries two million. Coach salary is two hundred seven thousand. That's perfect. Scout salaries. We our scout salaries is higher than the coaching salaries. Something ain't right with that. But what we're gonna do to fix that to fix our budget. Is get some sponsors, okay? So we have this gold sponsor with Hick Hickory uh, batting, bam, right there. So we'll get two thousand per hit, perfect. Um, ten thousand per home run, because I think we're gonna hit a lot of home runs with Justin Bohr, my team Prado, Brian Anderson, um, Garrett Cooper. We're gonna hit a lot of home runs. Then batter walk up sponsor. Let's get 2,500 per run or 10,000 per double play. We're gonna go 10,000 per double play. I like our um, our middle infield. For the players, moral, um, 
a lot of guys are happy right now, which I like to see. Uh, see if anybody is. These guys, Gary Cooper is very unhappy. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know why he's unhappy, but he'll get happy or he'll get traded. That, those are my options. You get happy or get traded. Because right now, there's no reason for you to be upset. His team role expectation is to be a star. Why? I don't know. He has it. You have a 65 overall at best. No, you're not going to be a star of this team. I'm sorry. So he's happy about his contract, but he's not happy about his team role. You're not going to be a star. Shit like that is what's going to get you traded very, very quickly. So if Gary Cooper continues with this behavior, he'll be out of Miami very, very fast in a blink of an eye. And I have no concerns or worries about saying that at all. Um, yeah, it's very simple. But everybody else seems to be okay. Everybody else is cool. It's just funny that the top guy, Maben, is uh, he's super ecstatic. Uh, he's uh, so happy that his overall boost is up four from a 72 to 76. And that's because our team is telling him he's the star. You're not the star, homie. You're about to get traded. Actually, what we can do is... put Cameron Mayban, Brad Ziegler, and even Chin on the trading block. And uh, positions that we are seeking, we're seeking starting pitching. Um, we have young talent everywhere. So we want relief pitching. And I, I like I like the guys that we have coming up um, with Sierra and Harrison in the outfield, but I'm still going to seek some some outfielding help. Uh, J T Riddle, I like him at shortstop, and then we do have Brian Anderson at third base. Uh, Castro and Bohr, their their rank 14th and 12th. I'm still going to seek some help there um, at first base. And bada boom, bada man. And then the next thing we want to take care of is the most important thing for the future of our franchise. Uh, GM goals. First of all, let's look at the GM goals. Year, my contract is a three-year contract. My job security is an average. My GM rating is a C because I haven't done much. I haven't done anything yet. My bad. Uh, the goal this year is to finish over 500. I don't think I'm going to reach that goal. But that's okay because my second and third year, I want to make big splashes and, and, and make my job security even higher. I think, I'll, I think I'll be fine if I don't make it. And then the contract goal that they want me to do is reach the postseason. So by the year three, they want us to make the postseason. I think I can do that better than I can make make it over 500 with this team this year. So my goal, for fuck the yearly goal. Fuck that goal. They know damn well we won't make it over 500. That's fine. My eyes are on the postseason because this, this isn't my team yet. This isn't my team yet. I haven't done anything under my GM skills besides the pitching rotation and the lineups. But as far as trades, transaction, drafting, I, nothing about this team has been me yet. So keep that in mind. We're gonna do. We're gonna make a lot of changes. I'm telling y'all, from coaching to scouting, we're gonna make a lot of changes. Now scouting. This is for the draft. Okay. So these guys. We know about them. They're already scouted fully. Anybody with a blue, I mean, anybody with a full green line of accuracy means they're fully scouted. Um, so what we want to do before we assign players to scouts is we want to look at our scouts to the left screen with all of these names, and we want to look at what they scout the best. So for Keys, D Keys, um, he scouts in the international range. And what his best scouting attribute is, is position players. So shortstops, left fielders, things like that. Our next guy, B. Ramirez, his best scouting tool is pitchers. So we're going to put him on pitchers. We're only going to allow him to scout pitchers. And then K. Stanley, he has a mixture of position players and pitchers, but 98 position players. So he's going to get a lot of position players. And then Stavall, um... He has a 95 position players, but his discovery is also high, which means 
he has the tendency of discovering a lot of players. He he has the eye. He knows what he's looking for. He knows exactly what to look for. Efficiency is an 85 for Stanley, which means a lot of guys that he he finds, he's efficient. He's efficient in finding diamonds in the rough or whatever. He's a fi he's efficient at finding good talent. He's always going to provide um, a good player. And then uh, the other guys aren't that high. Um, they're pretty average. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for potential. I want the highest potential players with the high overall. Okay. So you look at Aaron Rodriguez, a closing pitcher. He's in. He's from the international um, region. He's 21 years old, which is good. He's he's already kind of older and developed a bit, and he has a 70 overall already. Okay, and he has the potential of an 80. So a potential of the 80 is elite. If you look at the bottom row of the scouting scale, a 20 to 20 to 25 is poor. 30 to 35 is well below average. 40 to 45 below average. 50 to 55 is average. 60 to 65 is above average, 75 to 70 is well above, and 80 is elite. This is a real life scale. Um, if you do any research on the draft that's coming up in MLB in real life, or you do any, you know, um, any scouting on players that's about to be in a draft or anything like that, their scale is based on an 80, 20 to 80 scale. You know, it's not 100. Like if you look at basketball, they're gonna they're gonna rate guys out of 100. He's an 80, he's a 70, or he's a 90. MLB is 80 to 20 and 80 is elite 80 is basically the hundred so he has a potential of 80 he's elite Aaron Rodriguez is an elite closing pitcher um, and he's already pretty older so I like I like him um, I'm gonna keep my eyes on him Edgar Herrera um, is 18 years old and he has a potential of a 60 which is average but his overall is already 65 I'm gonna chill out on him I'm looking at I'm looking for guys who have the potential of eight because these are elite guys. So um, this Castel Castellano Castellano, my bad. Castellano is 19 international. Uh, he's a right righty. Um, he has four pitches, four pitches. He has a two seam changeup, split on a curveball. That's a nasty combination. He's from Cuba. He's six four. Um, I'm going to scout him. We're going to put him on. No, we don't want him on Keys because Keys is the international guy. We want him on Ramirez. Yes. So we need a position player for Keys. So I'm going to look for who is the highest potential position player. Um, Lester Hartley. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to position. Instead of doing all, it'll be quicker if I just go through position by position. <clears throat> so, um, catchers, Steven Morales, he, he has a 70 potential at 22 years old. He's only a 45. That's a little bit disappointing. But hopefully with that 70 poten potential, which is well above average, his, his overall will boost up quick. But he's already 22 with a 45. That's a little concerning. That's a little bit concerning, uh, Steven Morales. So, we're going to continue to look um, now. This guy who's Pendergrast, Pendergrast, um, he's 18, 70 potential with a 45 overall. That is more like it. That is a lot more like it. So by the time he's 21, 20 to 21, his 70 potential should get his overall up to the 65s or 70s by the time he's, you know, um, 20 or 21. So I'm, I'm going to keep my eye on him, especially because Justin Bohr is getting a little bit older. Justin Bohr is also not an elite player. He's just an average guy. Justin Bohr is a guy that... You know, if the right prospect comes along, he can be replaceable. Justin Bohr is replaceable is basically what I'm saying. Um, Edgar Herrera, 18 with a 60 potential. That's he's average. That's average. But starting Castro is better than that. So we're going to wait. Um, Carmine Abreu. I like Carmine Abreu. He's a 55 with a 70. Um... And then Hester Hart. I'm going to go with Lester. I think I said Hester the first time. I'm going to go with him. Or no, I'm going to go with the first baseman. Yes. And then down here, he also does position players. So I'm going to give him a Brayu. And then Stavall. 
I'm going to give him Hester. I mean Lester. So is it Lester or Hester? Yes, it's Lester. Okay, my bad. So we got some guys scouting right now. Uh, we got the tra trading block good. Disable list be cool. Top prospects. I'm going to just show y'all the top prospect list so y'all can see how many guys that we have. Um, I think this is, goes to 100, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, the top 50. We have one, Trevor Rogers, who's he's going to see the MLB sometime this season. He, uh, so we have one top 50 prospect. Two, and Brian Anderson, he's already starting. Um, Lewis Brinson, and that's it. We have three top 50 guys. Perfect. That, that's very well. Um, by the end of the season, hopefully we can have five. I'm looking for five or six, to be honest with you guys. And now, we're going to go to our main screen, and it basically shows us everything we need to see. Um, our budget, we have a projected revenue of 78.1 million, uh, which is excellent. Our total payroll is 51 million right now, so we don't have too much to work with. Um, I mean, so we're not paying too many players. Um, remaining budget is 31 million dollars. That 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 is very good to start off with a team. 31 million dollars is good, you know. So we could sign a guy like Bryce Harper or a guy like Manny Machado because those guys are going to seek 20 plus million dollars a year, 25 million dollars a year, or 30 million dollars a year. So by the time we trade Maben and Ziegler, that budget should go up to like 40 million which means we'll be able to sign an elite player if you wanted to come play for us in Miami. And then they, you know, because the elite guys are going to make 25 plus million a year. So if you have the budget of 31 million, you can go and put that 31 million into one player, one superstar player, and just build around him. Or you could take that 31 million or 40 million, which I think is going to project to be like $40 million, and we can take that and spread it across and, 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 uh, and uh, get talent in all all over the roster instead of one guy but we'll see we have a long way to go so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the calendar uh, and I'm going to send the first three games against the Chicago Cubs to open up the season and right now they have a, a milestone uh, Maven is a home run away from the cycle I'm going to turn off critical situations because I just don't have time to do that uh, critical situations is just this you know if, um, if a game is tied, bottom of the ninth, and there's a guy on third, they'll ask me if I want to jump in and play that. If somebody's pitching a no-hitter, they'll ask me, you know, do I want to jump in in the seventh inning and, and try to finish his no-hitter. Right now, Cameron Maybin is hitting for the cycle, three for three. Um, with a double, a single, and a triple, all he needs is a home run. No thank you. But I'm glad to see that Cameron Maybin is starting off hot and on fire because that means his trade stock is going to be up. So, we're one and two. We're one and two. Uh, it's a good start for us. The one game that I'm going to play is going to be against the New York Yankees. I think that'll be a fun game for you guys to watch and for me to play. Um, and it'll also be a game on the road. So, we'll, we'll be playing with a DH. And we're going to simulate through that. We 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 uh we got an offer. We we actually a little bit better than I thought. We five and eight, but let's see what the offer is. Um, they're trying to give us Tanner Roick, the starting pitcher, who is thirty one. He's an eighty overall. He's thirty one. Um, with a C potential. Let's see his contract. He's he's in the last year of his contract before ar arbitration. I'll explain what ar arbitration is when we get to the off season. Um, he's from Illinois. And they want Ezen Diaz. Isaiah and whatever. I can't pronounce it. Diaz. I am okay. No, thank you. Diaz is a B potential with 64 overall. We want youth. We're rebuilding. There's no reason for me to go out and get a 31-year-old pitcher. You know, even though he has an 80 overall, there's no reason for me to go get go get him. We're not playing for anything, so no thank you. Uh, we'll keep our young talent. Diaz is, is, is looking good with that B potential. And we're going to simulate these last two games before picking one of these New York Yankee games to play. So perfect. Uh, Chan is pitching good. He has a 1.8 ERA, 17 strikeouts, and 20 innings pitched. That's damn near a strikeout each inning. He's 1-0. and um, We're going against uh, Tanaka, who's 3-0, and <laughs> um, with 10 strikeouts and, and 22 innings pitched. This shows you how good... 
um, with a pitcher that Yin Chin has been. Um, and he has a 2.0 01 um, ERA. So let's play. Play full game. What did that screen just say? 45 minutes. Uh, hopefully this game ain't 45 minutes for y'all. Um, we'll go with our regular roll unis. We're playing in New York. Chin. And of course, I hate when the game does this, y'all. I hate when the game does this. That is so fucking frustrating. They did all this shit without me and I, I put purposely at the beginning of this made it auto on me so Brian Anderson hasn't been playing like I fucking did in the beginning of this episode y'all saw they changed it automatically JT Riddle hasn't been playing got all my young talent on the bench I don't care that he's on fire fuck him he's hitting 300 he no uh no not right now he's also hitting 300 but, and he's not even getting half the opportunity he's getting. So, yeah, see, he deserves to be playing. Martin Prado will get in for Cameron Maybank. He's leading the league in something. I don't know what exactly he's leading the league in, but it's... So, continue to, to build up your trade value. Thank you very much. But I can't even remember my lineup, but I think I do. Uh, JT was batting second. Castro was third. Boar fourth. Uh, Martin Prado is fifth. Perfect. And the reason I'm taking them out, even though they're doing good, is because it's it's about the young talent. I don't care that, you know, Rojas is doing good. You know, he's not a part of my future. So I need my young guys to get rep. Because right now, what they what these guys are doing, they're playing for contracts for other teams. Because I have been in 31 years, so he's not going to be a part of this team. He's just not. It's just it's unfortunately, you know, that's just the, the the situation that we're in. We have to focus on our young talent, and it's like this in real life. A lot of guys just. You know, they're good, but they don't they don't get the opportunity because the young guys are the future. And that's what I'm playing for right now. We have to focus on our future. That's what we're going to do. Um, and uh, that's just what it is. I, why the game does this, I don't know why they do this. This is very irritating. It irritates the hell out of me, to be honest with you. Because I put time in uh, purposely to do that. And I took a lot of time out to do that, actually. Just for them to come back and ruin it. Now, I'm, I'm glad I caught it before I actually played the game. Because I was going to be very, very pissed if Brian Anderson was on the bench. And I was expecting him to be starting. <sighs> so, my apologies for y'all right now that's watching me redo this shit. Because this can be a very, very annoying. But it has to be done. Lewis Brinson. Uh, JT. Castro, Gore, Prado, Anderson. Then last, okay, cool. Pitching rotation is the same. Of course not. I put him second. He's on fire, so I'm gonna leave him there. Um, but I put him second for a wee reason. Scouting, how is scouting been? So let's go look at some of the guys we scouted. And the good thing about scouting is, that, see, they replaced the guys that I had them scouting at first. And they're just going to find other guys. So his, okay, so he's the real deal. His accuracy is going up. So that means the accuracy bar tells me how close he is really to the 80 potential. So on one scouting trip, they're saying that he, yeah, he's, he's pretty much there. Um, I'm actually going to ask him to scout him again. Um, for him. Yes, scout him. Um, and then I'm going to ask him to scout a pitcher again. I want him to scout um, him. Yep. And then I want him to scout a position player who has an 80. Who has an 80? Mark Cohen, 18 years old. Scout him. I try to scout 80s, man. We got to get 80s, y'all. 
because those guys could potentially be superstars. Those could be the Bryce Harpers, Mike Trout of the league. So I'm trying to get those guys. Uh, do we have any other 80s? Shortstop 80. He's 19. Um, I'm going to actually tell them to go with Felix Moreno. Coaches' contracts. Don Maddenly probably won't be here next year. You know, that's just the, the bad of the business. I didn't hire him, but I got to fire him. Hopefully, I don't have to fire him. Hopefully, he can just run his contract out. Uh, let's see what I got in my inbox. Just some tutorials. Um, and yeah, I think that's good enough. I'll upload the, the plane. What I'll do is I'll upload this video and I'll upload the playing, uh, the actual footage of me playing the gameplay in another video, just in case it's long, because I know this video has probably been 40 minutes already. Uh, thank y'all for watching. It's Big Sacks Brazingas, the Marlin franchise. We're off to a good start, y'all. This is going to be the best franchise that y'all seen. If y'all interested, watch the gameplay. Let me know, because if y'all want to see the gameplay, I will find out. I will, I will add it into all the rest of the episodes. I'm just going to make it separate because I don't know if it's what everybody wants to see. But if the majority of the people say they want to see it in the episodes, then I'll, I'll include it in all the future episodes. Um, let me know what y'all think. Any ideas y'all got? Anything y'all see in this roster? Anything y'all would like me to uh, scout? Uh, do y'all think it's a certain position or is it a certain name that y'all seen on that scouting list? Um, is there anybody y'all think I should trade? What I should look for in the trades? Let me know. I'm all ears in the comments. Leave a like. If you're new, subscribe. We'll be back. Holla at y'all. Big Stacks out. Porzingis again! That brought the crowd to their feet.